Hi everybody, here's Christian, and this is the Teamwork Cast. Hey everyone, this is uh, Shepard. Remember to like, subscribe. God, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it when people do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm Cthulhu. I, I I'm can't still... I still can't stop drooling over Shepard's abs. And they are drool-worthy. For I'm sure, working Shepherd. on it, guys. I really you, am. It's it's clear. Also, I can't. I can't. I can't wait till the next time I go see Shepard and I can eat sushi off his abs. Mmm, sushi rolls from those rolls. <laughs> Pretty soon, you'll just be able to shred cheese on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we are about to shred some monsters today because we are playing our Let's Play of Monster Hunter Generations. What kind of quests are we doing today? Uh, we are doing a thousand blades of wrath, which is uh, hunt a hyper Cerigios. It's from the Agitated Observer. Hmm. Somebody help us! A Hyper Cerugius showed up and... Ah! What should we do? Somebody get rid of that thing! You're beautiful. You're... Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> I love it so much. All right, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Just to be safe. Never, never hunt Hyper Cerugius unprotected. <laughs> Shepard, gotta get this. Shepard, what's yeah. gotta get that meat? Shepard, mm -hmm. Shepard is teasing everybody with arms. The discussion in in the in the in the chat. Have you gotten arms already, Sir Shepard? I haven't. Um, I've, for some reason, I've been on a uh, first-person shooter kick recently, which is yeah, strange. you've been killing floor. Was the one that you were playing then? Oh, I've I've been playing a, an excessive amount of killing floor too. What is killing floor? Can you give me a rundown? So killing floor. W one was originally a uh, mod for Unreal Tournament, mm -hmm. which got um, worked up to the point where I think they eventually just released it as a standalone game. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's known pretty much for its extremely accurate uh, damage models um, and usage of iron sights. Like if you're huge into like iron sights, like Killing Floor Two is your game because like they care a lot about how the weapons handle, how they reload. And all those things. Killing Floor 2 is just a, kind of like an extension off of that. It's got some, again, very nice gun physics. Um, some really interesting perks. So, you know, it, it, it's it's a... I don't want to use the word classic wave-based shooter. It was, Killing Floor 1 was probably one of the original main horde mode shooters. I mean, it, it predates Left 4 Dead, if that helps. Okay. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't... Yeah. I'm not going to pretend to be an authority on. What, but what are you fighting shooters. in this game? What are you killing? The floor? Zombies. You were you were fighting. Uh, they're not zombies. They are Zeds. Mm. <laughs> no, yes. I don't know what the difference is, but they they are Zeds. It's, um, it's and it's like, zombies. They're, they're, mu they're, they're, they're mutated zombies more like the, the, the basic. The Horizon company has done some uh, yeah. questionable business practices that has resulted in like kind of like the world ending, and like you're the the funny part is like. The characters don't. Ha it's like not like a deep storyline. There's certainly not a single player campaign, but like all the characters you play as are just like kind of like normal people. Like, yeah. like it, it always seems like it's just a Semi bunch of guys that were like really drunk in the bar, and <laughs> like now they like, got to go fight off like an enormous zombie horde. That's what it always <laughs> yeah. feels like. Okay. And the, and, and, and the, the zo like the enemies remind me of like when, when I was playing it, it. It very much feels like a. Uh, House of the Dead style enemies. Oh yeah, where, absolutely. Like, like bosses, bosses are like over the top. Like one of the first bosses I fought was like this weird Nikola Tesla wanna be like if if he was like in a B movie. That was Hans. <laughs> I think that was Hans. Yeah. You fought Hans. So, Hans is hard. It's yeah. Um, it's it's. I'm gonna yeah. I'm dead. Ooh, Jesus. dead, dead. Okay. So, so that's what we've been playing recently. It, it, it is still currently free on the PlayStation 4, if you've got PSN Plus. you playing oh, yep. PSN Plus. Mm. Um, I try to play it that way, but it's just without having the mouse to control um, the, the gunplay, it's just so much harder to do certain things. Um, there are certain, on higher difficulties, you know, you, you really got to be nailing those headshots. Like, if you ever want to get better at a first-person shooter, just play this for a couple hours, because, like, it gets you... Like automatically learning how to aim for headshots, and like you'll you'll naturally become better at the game just through the hours of practice where you're aiming, aiming for those headshots. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, there's a lot of strategy. I mean, there's so many different perks, and they all have to kind of work together if you're playing, like, in a large group, like, on a harder difficulty. So, like, you'll have, like, a, a medic. You'll have a guy who, like, be, like, a berserker, try and, like, you know, hit things with the katanas and stuff like that. I know that sounds very anime. It's not that anime. A support guy that's got shotguns. I don't know. It's just, it's a lot, it's neat. It's either free or, I think it might even be on sale for, like, 10 bucks this weekend or 20 bucks. Yeah. It's not a very game at all. It's not. No. I mean, they're, they're getting some of their money through cosmetic DLC, and, like, that is, like, the way to do games, like, purely yeah. cosmetic DLC. Um, yeah, and then I also harsh. played, just because I don't want to stay in that forever, although, if you, seriously, if you play Killing Floor 2, like, I will, I will play it with you. Like, just, just ask, and I'll, I'll play it. Okay. I, I play the game all the time. All right. Um, I also played, finally, the campaign for Titanfall 2. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I, I want to also you, hear you've about. had a, a lot of people um, that were, like, referring to that game to, like, you know, like, the next Half-Life campaign because of mm -hmm. how good it was. And single I can player. easily... S single player. Yeah, the single player is basically, like, uh, yeah. like one of the best shooter campaigns is I've that ever so? played. Is that so? Wow. Ever. Ever. What? Easily. What makes it so great? It does not outstay they, its welcome. <laughs> it's not it, super it, long. It, 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 it's fairly short. Um, they do a really good job of um, building the narrative of the main character and the Titan uh, through story. Basically, a lot of there's just a lot of just the dialogue that happens as you're going along builds the characters and the world while you're still fighting things. None of the encounters are are overly long. Uh, they add some interesting mechanics that you don't see very well. You see them in other sh shooter games, but like they're just more well done here as, as the narrative pieces that they're trying to be instead of being like mechanics focused. Um, it's just it's such a good story. I, I'm really looking forward to more single player stuff in that it's, universe. It's, uh, that universe it, is really interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. It's um, scary though because like. It didn't. It didn't perform well because it got released at pretty much the worst possible time. It, it, it released the same time as Overwatch and Battle. Oof! Of War. Yeah. Or no, it wasn't. Uh. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't Overwatch. It was Call of Duty, uh, Black Ops. Yeah. Three Which is at the like why they would do that to their own IP. I don't know. Yeah. yeah it's it's done well since then, though. Like it's one of those things. Like the initial sales aren't well, but the sales continue to go on it because of um, just it being solid and people continuing to play it. And, well, if, you, if you were thinking about Titanfall 2, this is your wake-up call. Right? Yeah, Shepard? my... my, my yeah. 20 bucks for just the single player alone would be fine, but I played the multiplayer and that's really fun as well. I like it because even if you're like terrible at killing other players, like you can focus on just killing um, AI-controlled AI. enemy guys. In some of the modes, yeah, in attrition mode you can do that. The, the attrition mode seems to be the most popular mode. Yeah. Unless you're unless you're doing competitive, like just the casual attrition is really big. If you're and then a competitive side, then it's um, pilot only or titan only. Titan only, like everybody yep. always gets titans. Yep, it's like last titan standing. So everyone starts with their titan, and then whichever team loses their last titan la first loses. Oh, that's kind of a neat mode. It's 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 very strategic because Titans in the game are all very big and so. Can I ask you powerful what, looking? Our students pretty, pretty. Can neat. you recall what difficulty you played it on, Cthulhu? Uh, I believe I did it on normal, just because I wanted to play through it. I've heard on the harder difficulties, it's actually really challenging. I I played it on hard, and um, certainly I died. You know, plenty of times. Generally, I died not because I got killed, but because I just flung myself into a pit, which I guess doesn't yeah. change whether you're on normal or hard. Yeah. But it's like as as much damage as the enemy does, it's yeah. it, it doesn't bother you because your character is like so fast, he does yep. so much damage and he just like freaking go invisible pretty much whenever he wants. Yeah. Like that's something you start with, is like you just like cloak yourself, Christian, like instantly. Mm -hmm. And like the enemy's like, Where did he go? And then like you're behind them <laughs> shooting them in, in the back of the head with a shotgun. I'm Great. here. So I'm actually <laughs> almost tempted at some point. Um, I don't know, maybe in like another three or four months going through on, I think, the highest difficulty, mm. seeing how that goes. Mm. It's just fun. It's, uh, it's, 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 fun. it's, I mean, there's, there's giant robots you can enter. That seemed, that, that's already basically sold me. It's just, it's, you know, yeah. It, 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 it is the year of the giant robot. Yeah. Like, 
Uh, Bioware, the, the, the new, new Bioware Battle thing coming, as well. The yeah. new Bioware Anthem. Though, though, to be honest, Anthem just reminds me of uh, Iron Man, the RPG. Yeah, it's, it looks like it, yeah. I'm not I, sure I about watch the... the trailer for Anthem. What is this? What is this game? I saw pictures. Uh, yeah. So it's essentially think of Destiny if instead of Warlocks you were wearing power suits. Okay, yeah. yeah, are there going to be enough people that are going to be playing it? Well, it's Bioware. Bioware. It's a Bioware. Um, yeah. I, one of the interesting things that I, I noticed that at the end is that they have obviously they have different classes of power suits, and one of them is like a, like obviously like a caster type of like suit that you'd see in like a sci-fi thing like it's sitting there floating in the air crackling with energy and then you've got one like they showed like a in, in the stuff that was actually uh shown for the actual fighting there was one that was more like a, a heavy tank uh style for, uh suit and then one that was more of a scout suit so and i think it'll be interesting um, I'm, I'm, we we obviously know we obviously now know why uh, Mass Effect Andromeda was so piss poor hmm. because obviously spending all the time on that working on that <laughs> instead. Well, I don't know if it's uh, because of this, but this definitely seems at least more polished than Andromeda. So so yeah, uh, I don't know. I I'm still I'm skeptical as as uh, uh, Shepard is about this a little bit because there is destiny as well. You know, <laughs> they would have to really give this something else that destiny is not giving people and i'm not uh, seeing the, it yet the big thing the big thing that i think it'll offer over destiny is probably bigger story bigger story well uh, yeah yeah more more narrative content but then again i i would love to see that how that, that's integrated because the pro the, the problem with, yeah. the, with destiny is, was like there was the great backstory the great world building but nothing actually specific interesting yeah. happening um, they didn't do anything should, I, interesting. should i kick him off you guys can be able to get off actually i should just kick him off i should not Wait and see what he does. He's grabbing me. Um, yeah. So um, I, I'm not. Sure. I saw the demo to MechWarrior, but I'm not. Sh I'm not really so sure about MechWarrior. I, I the, the, the BattleTech. For, it, it's very. It, it's very. Yes. Sorry, BattleTech. Yes. Um, very true. Not 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 a hundred percent true, but it's very reminiscent of the tabletop version, which is what I I, I miss. So for me, it's 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 a return to my childhood. I think so, I think for extent. people who grew up with this and want to see like a good good implementation of this, uh, I think it's great. I think that's 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 really yeah. great for like for a nostalgia trip. But on the other hand, like you can tell that this has not aged very well. <laughs> no, it has not. Like with, with with modern modern the modern rule sets. And well, the, also like the design stuff. of the monsters, like how, how agile, uh, not the, the mechs, I mean, and how agile the mechs look and how, you know. Uh, well, that, that, that's part of the universe. Though. Yeah, yeah, like, there's, like, there are these hung, this, this hulking, slow, huge yeah. beasts that, that's the very meta methodo methodical combat and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's part of the universe, I'm sure, for sure, yeah. But, you know, in general, uh, like, I feel things are, like now with Titanfall and stuff like that, there's like, you know, more nimble mech uh, yeah. Combat more way more dynamic, or way more mobility as well, like flying mechs and stuff like that is, is what we're having these days. Yeah. Well, I don't know, but I, I you know, if uh, I understand, completely understand if that's something you grew up with, that you, that's it's it's really good to see this version because as me as well, like when in, during high school, uh, me and my friends were like reading all the books, but we never actually got to really play it. Yeah. Because you know the figures and stuff like that, they're quite a huge steep. Well, and yeah, they were <laughs> entry like, level. Oh, entry level for it, like oh, shot two hundred bucks. Yeah, like, there you go. Now you're now you're ready to do like a a, a two person game. When we are at <laughs> at Bur in Birmingham, there was like it's always fascinating to go into the section where people are playing the, uh, the miniature games. Whereas, like you know, we bring uh, we play Netrunner. We bring like a box of cards and maybe a bunch of tokens. But they like log in like a huge cart full of boxes, which carefully, you know, wrapped miniatures, and they take like half of a day setting up a single game. Yeah. And then they have like this super slow, intricate battle, and then maybe do like two games per day or so. And then. Oh, we used to be like it was like a one game, one day game. Yeah. Like, that yeah. was it. <laughs> yeah. So it was interesting to see that kind of that kind of world, and it's kind of nice to see this then becoming reality in in a computer yeah, where it's more I, accessible. It's it's a trend that I've, I've noticed a lot more recently. Is more and more board games are offering digital versions of the board game experience. Yep. 
Um, and I really enjoy that because I enjoy board games, but I can't play board games with people yeah. in person a lot of times. Yeah. So, and also like the setup, like which, which is something like Netrunner as well, which is just it's just a card game. It's very accessible, but still you have to yeah. shuffle, you have to build decks, you have to sleep in your cards. Yep. It takes a long time, and you. On online, you can just start a game and, and you're done in, in, in you know, yeah. 10, 10 minutes and it's done. How long did it take us to set up our first Arkham Horror card game at your house Ooh. that one night, Shepard? <laughs> and how fast could we do it in uh, Tabletop Simulator when we were resetting scenarios? <laughs> well, God knows it was a lot easier to build custom decks on Tabletop Simulator. Yeah. I mean, I could imagine there being a day where, you know, Surface Pro equivalents are so ubiquitous, people have them all the time. And you just get four people sitting around, all connected in person, playing like that. Yeah. Uh, as bizarre as that is, I mean, I, I like the the actual physicality of things. Yeah, no, but no. But for I, some games, absolutely. it's like some games, it's like ugh. No, I mean, it for me? it's there's advantages to both approaches. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It depends on the game. Yeah. You know. <laughs> like <laughs> sometimes you want the majesty of it. Like yeah, laying out Mage Knight. You know. And, you know, the entire table that it takes and then building it piece by piece is a lot of fun. Also, even something like playing Netrunner in a physical space, it's so different because you can see the opponent and you can feel the bluffing and, you know, feel them out. Yeah. But if you're playing it with, a, with an interface in front of you, it's very more, much, way more difficult to read the opponent. Oh, yeah. The, like certain games like... Uh... Like Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. Much better in person. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no questions asked. Yeah. Absolutely. Shepard, however, just wants to play Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. Um, no you know, I was actually having form. a conversation with somebody last night around um, midnight about a, <laughs> organizing a Battlestar Galactica game. Which would Donald it's, Trump? It's the sort of thing. It's like my white whale. Like, I, I really don't think there's a number of times I could play that game before I get sick of it. I, I have that with uh, pretty much all of the Arkham line of Fantasy Flight games. Yeah, but and like like I would never take... turn down like an Arkham game, you yeah. know. I mean, there are of course better like each iterative approach to it definitely makes it so I would want to play that more than the previous, right? Yeah. So like Arkham City isn't as you know necessarily as fun to play now as Eldritch. Is, yeah. is it Eldritch Horror? Eldritch Horror, yeah. And it's then Arkham Horror, Eldritch Horror. and then the card game of course changes it up yeah. even more to something that like I prefer that deck building aspect right now. It's like I would yeah. prefer to play that. But I would still, like, if somebody said, hey, you want to play Arkham, I'd be like, sure. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right, guys. The magic will continue. The magic will continue. On the next episode, we're going to discuss more stuff, and there's going to be more um, battles with monsters going on. We're plowing through Hunter Rank 7. Is that 7 now? 7, right? Yep. Oh, man. So many Hunter Ranks. And then Kitty's is attacking the camera currently. So uh, see you next time around. And as always, good luck and good hunt. Meow. <laughs> I love how I love how how your cat reacted to you meowing. He's <laughs> like, ah, what is going on? Wait. What is going on? Uh. Squatty potty. Who needs underwear when you never got poop? Brought to you by Squatty Potty.